Hello and welcome to the Monday, July 21st, 2025 edition of the Sands and Annette Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, recording today from Jacksonville, Florida. And this episode is brought to you by the Sands.edu Master's Degree Program in Information Security Engineering. The top news today is a new actively exploited SharePoint vulnerability. Microsoft published a special bulletin over the weekend to alert of this vulnerability, but has not yet released a patch. Microsoft's advice at this point is twofold. First of all, deploy anti-malware on your SharePoint server. If you're unable to do so, block access to the SharePoint server. Basically, take down your SharePoint site. Neither workaround is great at this point. The attackers exploiting this vulnerability have been deploying web shells. Web shells are the preferred payload, of course, for exploits like this. And Microsoft's anti-malware tools will detect web shells currently deployed by the group attacking vulnerable SharePoint servers. But it is likely only a matter of time for the web shells to emerge that will bypass current detection rules. If you are operating a SharePoint server that is currently exposed to the internet, assume compromise. There is no patch. The vulnerability does not appear to be linked to a particular configuration. Any currently deployed SharePoint server should be considered vulnerable and given the widespread exploitation of the vulnerability should be considered compromise. The exploit targets the toolpane.aspx script. First evidence of the vulnerability was made public by researchers with Code White last week. But initially, no proof of concept, exploit, or additional details were released. The new vulnerability is a variant of an older vulnerability patch that this July is part of Patch Tuesday. And Code White initially used the CVE numbers associated with these older vulnerabilities. Microsoft this weekend assigned this vulnerability a new CVE number. It's a new distinct vulnerability, even though it is some of the variation of uh, these older vulnerabilities as well. The root cause appears to be the use of specific referrer headers, signout.aspx, uh, which bypass authentication and allows for code execution. With that also, the attacker can get a hand of uh, the keys being used to encrypt your view state, and that then leads to an insecure deserialization attack that then can be further exploited by the attacker. Microsoft states that its SharePoint 365 service is not affected. The first hit against a URL that a particular page that we have seen our honeypots was on the 16th. It was one individual hit from actually a Microsoft IP, but let's say the Microsoft company could be one of uh, their cloud users or whatever uh, playing with this. We don't see a lot of exploit attempts against honeypots at this point because, well, after all, they're first checking if you're actually running SharePoint, which we are at this point not emulating. Maybe we'll do this uh, shortly. And in Diaries this weekend, uh, Xavier came across an interesting phishing email. This email claims to originate from a voicemail system, but instead of including the transcribed voicemail, something I've uh, certainly seen before, it included the actual audio file in the WAV format. The message is very brief and claims that the recipient's uh, Veeam backup license has expired. Uh, Veeam, of course, is uh, the large backup system commonly used in particular if uh, you're dealing with virtualization and the like. And, well, the recipient should call back and uh, basically get that resolved. It's a very short message. In the particular case that Xavier has looked at, the, the victim had nothing to do with Veeam. They didn't use Veeam. This does not appear to be authentic uh, from Veeam. Also, they're basically just using it as a pretense to trick the victim to call back to then do probably some kind of a tech support scam. And NDR company Expel has identified an interesting attack against passkeys or FIDO2. This attack according to Expel, has already been exploited in the wild in order uh, to bypass uh, passkeys as a two-factor authentication solution. When using a passkey or FIDO2 as second factor, the user is prompted to provide their passkey after initiating authentication with a username and password. 
Now, to aid in usability, Passkey offers because of an extension to the original Fighter 2 spec where the user may use a device other than the one they're just uh, using to connect to the website in order to complete the authentication. And Passkey offers two methods in order for the browser the user is using to connect to a secondary device, like in many cases, a mobile phone. The first case is Bluetooth Low Energy, not affected here by this particular issue. The second one is a QR code. And then essentially the user is pointing their phone at the QR code and completing the authentication to log in. What's being abused here is that the attacker will basically just classic phishing, ask for username and password on a fake website. Then the attacker will basically turn around, present that website to that information to the victim's website and take the QR code that comes back, present it to the victim, and then ask the victim to complete the authentication using this QR code, using their mobile phone. So this way, the attacker is then completely logged in. The solution here is don't allow QR codes for these login scenarios only allow Bluetooth Low Energy or basically force the user to complete the authentication on the device they're currently um, sitting in order to connect to the website. And uh, that, of course, may not be a great option in many cases. The problem with, uh, or the reason why there are these QR codes in the first place is that, you know, think about it, you're sitting on some kind of work computer, you're trying to log in to a website that's uh, more personal. You don't want to share this uh, passkey with the work computer. So the QR code essentially allows you to complete authentication without sending the actual passkey to the work computer. And of course, in particular, with sort of more tightened up configurations, you may not be able to use Bluetooth Low Energy to connect uh, to your work computer. And the QR code is your only option. Another um, solution here that is being recommended by Expel is if you can't disable QR codes, you could review your logs in order to look for any kind of suspicious uh, login attempts here that are using QR code. That, of course, depends on the volume of the logs, whether or not uh, this is actually a realistic uh, option. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. Uh, thanks for everybody I saw at Science Fire uh, last week. It was a great event and had a lot of good uh, sort of connections uh, there. Thanks uh, for liking, subscribing, and of course, as always, uh, for rating this podcast and giving it uh, good uh, reviews. Thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.